Actually, I was born in, here in New Orleans during World War II at Turo Hospital while my father was getting ready to go overseas. Uh, he left soon after I, I was born, and my mother and I and my sister, a little older than I was, we moved back up to North Louisiana and lived on the farm with my grandparents for four years. Then we moved to Homer when World War II was over with, and there was only two or three things to do in Homer, Louisiana, and that was to play football, and play sports, go to church, and go to school. <laughs> and uh, right. so I enjoyed all kinds of high school athletics. Uh, I played on a championship football team, and really if I found my niche uh, as a pole vaulter, and with that niche in high school, I set one of the state records in our division and wound up getting a full scholarship to LSU as a pole vaulter. That's amazing. Won the SEC. And that really brought me forward uh, in my career in athletics. And having been at LSU, I got into medical school, probably didn't deserve it, but being an LSU athlete, uh, I got a, into LSU medical school. The thing I wanted to do my whole life, though, was be a team physician. The team physician of my high school team was uh, my next door neighbor, and he was a family practitioner. And so uh, he mentored me all along about being a team physician. And so my entire career, I knew I wanted to go into medicine. I wanted to put sports medicine and medicine together. And obviously that's what I was able to do and still do. That's a pretty amazing story. Yep. Small town, Homer, Louisiana, and look where you are now. I've been very fortunate. Yeah, that's amazing. So what else? Tell me about the rest of your career. I know a little bit about it. Well, when I was, uh, when I was 15, I hurt my knee. And uh, you probably know him. Doug Henderson uh, did my, my right knee ACL reconstruction. I know uh, Doug but, very well. But the, but the rehab, as you know, at that time was horrible because they had no fixation. And so they put me in a cast for four months. Uh -huh. And you know, it was very, That's what very we touching. Did in those days. Right, very touch and go whether I was going to get back on the field. 1979, you, I had you, my ACL. Your leg looked about like that when you got the cast exactly. off. Exactly. I didn't started it? crying. My dad started hugging each other. I was a good athlete before that. Did you faint? Yeah. No, I didn't faint. I just started crying. I had a faint <laughs> when it took the cast off back oh, yeah. in those days. Oh, yeah. Big, long incision. You're young. I'm 15. Uh, but luckily, I, I did a great rehab. They did a great job. Um, it, it, the fixation held because they waited took for Took a year. Yeah, exactly. For a full year for recovery. Went on to play uh, soccer at Emory University and a little bit overseas, uh, so really did well. I uh, lost my speed, some of my speeds. I was really good at track before that. Speed went down after that, but I was still good with soccer ball, so I did that. Uh, and then that was at Emory University. And then I went to Stanford for med, went to uh, Harvard for residency. And you went to all the big shot schools. I went to some big shot schools, yeah. And a few. Went to Pittsburgh for fellowship. And uh, I, I remember interviewing with you, and you told me if I was going to come to the Southeast, I needed to come and, and, uh, and stay at your fellowship, so I should have probably done that. But no, you did fine. You did <laughs> fine. So it was great. I mean, it came here in 2004, uh, nine months before Katrina hit. And uh, so it was, it was a fortuitous move for me. Obviously, Katrina was a big damaging event for the entire area. And I uh, started our program nine months before that was taking care of the NBA team, the Hornets at the time. But then after that, uh, the Saints became available as well. So I gave the NBA team to one of my other partners, started taking care of the Saints. And, uh, you know, the rest is history. Here we are. So... Yeah. I've just been following you for years, and you've helped me with the Saints when I was taking care of them. You're helping Kareem Mayer right now, helping him yeah. take care of the Saints. We really appreciate your help and your education, your teaching. Well, the Saints have always been one of medicine. my favorite professional teams. Yeah. When I was here in medical school, I lived in a, some condos out, in, uh, in, in, out near the airport in the lakefront where all the Saints players were, were living. Okay. So I knew all those players back in those days, and I followed the New Orleans Saints. Was that in the 90s, or what year was no, that? No, that was no in medical school. That was when they first started the Saints. Okay. So I've been a real Saints fan all these years, and obviously uh, uh, followed Drew, Drew Brees through the years, and yeah. even came, became closer to the Saints, having operated on his shoulder. Yes, sir. Yeah, that's, that's basically when but I started But I've always had a love for New Orleans, as you probably know. Yeah. Yeah, well, we knew that you did the, uh, the surgical intervention on Drew, so I, I, I was really comfortable. And when they were asking me whether it was going to work or not, I said, Dr. Andrews did the surgery. I think we'll, we'll be okay. <laughs> Big shoulders. <laughs> yeah, but he, he, he turned out to be all right. So that, that worked out pretty well for everybody. Yeah. yeah great well, job. Let me tell you, of all the athletes I've operated on, he's the most motivated athlete I've ever operated on. And, Very true. And when you talk about giving credit for recovery and, and his career, 
you can't take that motiv motivation and change it in any kind of way, and you got to give him full credit for what he did. Yeah. Uh, I was just fortunate enough to ride along with him. Yeah. But he was unbelievable uh, in, in his work ethics and was that way throughout his entire career. A true professional. I'm telling you, unbelievable person. Yeah, true professional all the way through, no doubt about it. Yeah, I was there in uh, 2009, 2010 when we won the Super Bowl as well. Absolutely. I was a team physician, got a, got a Super Bowl ring, so uh, New Orleans Saints would be my favorite. Uh, I remember since our I quarterback I intercepted that pass and that was the end of the game. Yeah, yeah, Tracy Porter. Yeah, absolutely. I was looking at a guy's toe. <laughs> when that happened, but I, I, but the, but the, but the cheer was so loud, I knew it had to be us because we had, I think about seventy-five percent of the fans in that stadium were ours. So yeah, yeah, it was it was a good day, good day. <laughs> you treat everybody special, and if you try to change up what you do as a routine because of some athlete that's elite what we call very special, high, at a high level, high professional level, and you start trying to change up your routine, you're probably not going to do the best job. And I tell all the young fellows that we train, the reason you have a routine is because that's how you do it best. So you don't change up your routine because you're operating on somebody that's at a high elite level. You, you treat them just like any other athlete or any other patient. They may be a little bit harder to take care of, but you treat them the same. Yeah, I always think back to when I was a patient, and uh, I uh, unfortunately had several sports injuries throughout my, my <laughs> career, so I, had, I was a patient quite a bit, uh, which is why I'm doing what I'm doing today. But I always think about that when I, when I see patients. And so when I do have a great success and someone comes back and, and uh, tells me how great I am and how great they're doing, that's probably the, probably the most enjoyable part of being a, a sports medicine physician. Seeing, seeing that young person get back on the field, do what they, or, the, or of any age, get back on the field, get back on the court or wherever they do, running, and get back on that, uh, that, that sport activity. And they tell me how well they're doing, they bring back a picture or something or a video, and that's just very enjoyable for me. You know, along the same lines, one of the things that, that I try to tell all of our young pupils, fellows, is that they need to enjoy their patients, and they need right. to follow their patients and enjoy their success. Yes. You don't just operate on them and forget about them, no. but you follow them and, and, and you enjoy their successes. Uh, but the joy of medicine, don't let anybody not tell you that the joy of medicine is still winning. Yes. <laughs> so the joy of sports medicine, that is, That's is right. still winning. That's right. Uh, but you've got to learn how to take your losses, too, and you've got to learn how to, to learn from your losses. That's right. Uh, you're not going to continue to win in life with everything you do. That's true. But uh, you can't run away from your losses. But enjoying your winnings is still the key. Yeah. Well, you know, as you get older, you begin to think about, believe it or not, something that we've been neglected at, and that's prevention of injuries. For me, since about year 2000, uh, I began to understand the problem we're having with injuries in our young athletes and the epidemic of injuries that's occurring since year 2000 is when I really started seeing it. And I started recognizing that we've got an epidemic of youth sports injuries in our young kids uh, in epidemic proportions. And as a matter of fact, at our foundation in Birmingham and in, in Gulf Breeze, Florida, we've seen a nine to tenfold increase in youth sports injuries since year 2000. And as I said, we were neglect because, as I know, probably you would say the same thing early in our career, all we were concentrating on was putting Humpty Dumpty back together again. Uh, and we were neglect in thinking about how to prevent injuries. So since year 2000 and, and up until the twilight of my career today, I've been extremely passionate about trying to figure out how to prevent injuries in youth sports. And we've done a lot of work that I could elaborate on, but in a number of different ways, trying to control the injuries in youth sports, all the way from developing pitch count in youth baseball to working on co prevention of concussions uh, to trying to accredit youth coaches to learn about how to recognize youth sports injuries early on, how to to make sure that we have athletic trainers in all public high schools, on and on and on. And all of these prevention situations 
hopefully we can get this epidemic under control. So the two things that, that we see related to the increase in injuries in youth sports is specialization. That means playing one sport year round with no rest. And then the other thing is professionalism. And professionalism means they're training these young kids, even at age five and six years old, like they're professional athletes. And these kids' bodies are not ready for that intense training, and they burn them out. Yes. And they get hurt. They get overuse injuries, and they get hurt before they get to be real athletes. They need to have, your, you know, the young athlete needs to have at least two months off each year where he's not participating in that particular sport where he has time to go play and have fun, preferably three to four months off each year. Uh, unfortunately, now most of our young athletes have one week off per year, and that's usually the week of Christmas or right after Christmas. And they're burnt out before they get to be real athletes or they're injured early. By the way, if they get early, injured early, the chances of them going up the ladder and playing sports in college or professionally goes way, way down in percentages of success. So you got to prevent them from getting hurt when they're kids. As things turned out, the culture of Louisiana has spread throughout from the south to the north, and so now I'm, I'm really in love with the culture of the New Orleans and, and we spent a lot of time, my wife and I do, and my kids, we spent a lot of time coming to New Orleans uh, because of the culture here. And for me, uh, having lived in Louisiana, uh, it, it's really great to come back here. And that's one of the reasons that I'm in, enjoying this relationship with Oster Health so much. But New Orleans is unique, as you well know. Yes, sir. Uh, I've been here for two days. I had one of the best meals last night I've had in a long time, and of course that's what New Orleans is known for. That's right. Yeah, it's great food, great music. Absolutely. Great, great uh, festivals. And the thing about New Orleans culture and even now Louisiana culture is the people are so friendly. They're positive thinkers. They laugh a lot. They even laugh at themselves. They have a good time. They enjoy life, and they work hard and they seem to accept their situation in this part of the country, and, and you can't get them out of here. <laughs> so it's good for me to be able to That's come right. back and be part of it again. I accept this responsibility with heavy shoulders because I'm trying to figure out what can I do to take you to the next level from everything I've learned, and I've been to several of your different places around Louisiana and even over into Mississippi and, and seen some of your other satellite clinics and hospitals. The thing that's impressed me with the Ostner Health is that everybody I've met takes that same attitude. Well, we're doing, we're doing pretty good, but we're not doing good enough and we want to move to the next level. I hope the future of this partnership uh, does exactly what we talked about earlier, which is uh, you know, bring the uh, Ostner program further along in its growth uh, as a sports medicine program to increase the fellowship, increase the research support, increase the, uh, the impact on the sports medicine field, uh, non-operative and operative prevention, treatment, operative treatment, physical therapy, performance enhancement, all aspects of sports medicine. I just want to continue to advance and innovate and uh, bring this to the, to the next level and continue to grow with the field of sports medicine and the, the entire world and, and demonstrate what we can do in New Orleans. Well, you got it. We're going to do the best we can to, to do exactly what you said. The old saying is there's no step too high for a high stepper. And uh, Oshner's health is a high stepper, so we've, we've got a great system to work with, somebody with open mind and, uh, and giving us all the support for you and I need to take this to the next level. So I can't tell you how proud I am. And again, I, I accept that challenge with a lot of humility. And I hope I can live up to your expectations. So uh, it's a big challenge. Well, thank you for that, Dr. Andrews. We, we expect uh, nothing less than that, obviously. You, you're, the, <laughs> you're the best in the world, so we don't, we don't have any worries about that. Well, thanks, Dr. Andrews. Great well, talking to you today. It's a joy being here, believe me. All right, thanks.